morning, everybody. We've got another busy day today. I am starting to mow this last field on the upper farm, and it doesn't show it right here, but it is lodged pretty bad in places. Up here, it's pretty good, and it's quite early enough in the morning that it's still quite wet, so it's mowing a little bit hard, but um, we've got some tedding to do today that I hope to show, but I just wanted to show you this. This is what happens sometimes you start out in a new field. This tree was not here this spring, but now we get a tree across. So um, we're gonna have to just go out and around here, I am sure, because I have no saw to cut this with. So we're just gonna have to loop around this spot and fix it later. almost got into some trouble this morning. I was mowing along this stretch here and I knew this ditch was coming off. There's a drainage ditch, but I didn't catch it in time. And Ken dropped into that ditch and Buck did too. And the mower plugged up and oh my goodness, he had a little troubles. But luckily they were able to work their way out through it. And as you can see, Ken went down, up and down a few times in the mud. He was just sinking right in the mud so bad because it's so wet. But he's okay. All fine. But it could have been bad. I'm just thankful my horses are in good shape to be able to handle that kind of a episode in the mud and the muck. So I gotta be careful because I got one more up above here I gotta take care of too. I'm gonna make sure I don't walk into that one. As you can see, we get some pretty hard rain the last few days, and when we do, this is what happens, especially in the better stands of hay. It flattens the hay right down, and it is very, very hard to mow. If you're mowing the right way, it's not so bad, but if you're not mowing the right way, it just kind of goes right over the top of it. It's amazing how well this mower does work in this hay. It is literally laying right down flat and this mower is cutting underneath it pretty good. Also amazing because my tires are pretty well flat, not flat, but they, they just have no cleats on them. And it still cuts through this stuff if things are, if everything else is just about perfect to allow that to happen. Of course, you can't really tell how well you do until you rake it up, but we're, we're cutting pretty good, all things considered. So I went around five times, and that's all I want done for now. So we'll go back and ted some hay. Okay, so I'm going to try something I haven't tried yet. Um, I'm going to put Bill in my shafts that I have here that I'm going to put into this cart that has the motor on it and use him for um, Ted and some hay. Um, people have asked about using, making videos on a single horse, so that's one reason I'm gonna do it, but also um, with the motorized cart, the tether is really, can be easily handled with a single horse. So uh, I thought maybe we'd try Bill in there. Now I don't believe Bill has ever been in a set of shafts before. Some people call them fills, I call them shafts. Um, that's kind of a homemade one that I set up and this cart is made with a pipe that the, this tongue, the long tongue goes in. So I will actually slide that back out. I have a block there that's holding the end up. And then the shafts are set up to, I've got a, it's kind of a square talk, square stock type of thing at this end. And then I've got it set up to go into my carts, which have a pipe. So that's why that, round piece of wood is such to slide right in there, I hope. I've never used this setup on this cart. And it's not gonna work like that but I know what I can do to fix it. So,
Five back up. Five oh, nine. you need it. Five nine. Wait. Sometime I'll try to do a better close up on how I hitch a horse up onto shafts. But today I was kind of short on time and needed to get to the hay field and get this hay dry. Bill has worked on both sides of the pole when he's working double, so that gets him a little bit prepared for having a, a pole on each side of him as I teach him how to work single in shafts. He did fine. I get used to them. Bill, why don't you turn around and look at those and then you can get used to them. There he goes, he's doing it. Now look over here, over here, Billy. I have found out the hard way that you really have to have a safety pin on the bottom of your hitch pin when you're using this tether. I use it with the tractor quite often and so you're going faster and the hitch pin popped out and the tractor walked right away from the tether and the, fortunately the power takeoff shaft came disconnected and there was no harm done. This little 13 horsepower Honda motor is very good on gas, takes very little. Of course he's tethered before on the team, but it's still good to let him hear the tether with this new outfit that's going on and just to make sure he'll not have a problem with it. All ready to head to the field and then somebody shows up for some lumber so I had to go back and take care of that and do a little bit more on my shafts. Here I'm just putting a safety strap on. I'll explain this a little bit more to you later in the video.
teeth were down a little too low and were touching the ground, so I needed to lift them up just a little bit. I want them to spin without touching the ground, but be very close. So this is hay I, I caught a couple days ago, but it got rained on. I had actually showed a video of this a couple days ago, and uh, so now I have to ted the rained on hay, and then we'll move into the green hay that I just cut um, a short while ago, and I'll tell you how I do it. There's still some green in this hay here, so it'll make fine cow hay for my beef herd but it won't be fed to the horses and it won't be sold because it's been rained on and so the quality just isn't so good I have two different tethers I have this one here that I've just purchased new fairly recently and then I've got an old grim tether which is a kicker type of tether which works okay but this one just works so so much better but the problem with this one and actually the other tether also is when you're the first time you go through it's fairly easy to see where to, where you're going but after that it's sometimes very difficult to even tell where you're going and what what you've already done it's uh, when you're kicking up green stuff like I am right here and now it's pretty easy to tell but a lot of times it's all the same color and it's really hard to tell where to go Bill is the shortest horse I have, the shortest legs, and he is the fastest walker that I have. It's a little bit difficult sometimes to match him up with another horse because he has such a fast pace to him, but working single like this, he can walk his speed and we roll right along, it works good. You can see this field was lodged quite bad when I cut it also. The green right there, that's not green hay, that's still standing hay that just got mowed over and never got cut down very good. But that's just what happens sometimes with lodged hay. I'm glad Brenda enjoys running because while she's doing these videoing, she does do a lot of running around to get better shots. As you can see, it never got too warm today. I still have a long sleeve shirt on. I think it's in the mid 60s.
So uh, here I'm finishing up the brown hay and pulling into the newly cut green hay. You can see the swaths, the different cuts that I made with the cutter bar. And what I generally do with this tether is I will attempt to cover two swaths in one pass. The heaviest hay is right at the swath board because it pulls more of the hay together to make a path so that the horses know where to walk when I'm mowing. So that is the spot I want mostly um, targeted to get tetted. So what I tend to do is the swath board path on the right hand swath, I try to make sure I get that and then there's some from the left hand swath that is not the swath board path that I do miss the first time around. But it's so important to make sure I spread out where the swath board path is. This probably makes absolutely no sense to people what I just said, but the people that have mowed hay will understand I think what I'm meaning. You can see the tethers right there on the edge of the swath board path and breaking that up. So as we finish up this video, I want to talk about shafts. My shafts have been sitting around for quite some time, um, and I knew they were starting to get a little bit ripe. That is why at the start of the video there, I had that strap and I wrapped it for safety just in case the back part, if it was to break, it would still get caught and held together. Um, I didn't want something to go bad there. But I knew the shafts themselves were, were getting kind of bad. I even have a piece of plastic on it from the last horse. Apparently it was hitting this, rubbing his leg there. So as I turned to my right, which is what I did a whole time, I had no problem at all. But towards the end of the field, I started to turn to my left a little bit. And when I did, that side, that shaft, broke right in half. It actually kind of just snapped and I immediately stopped him. And I knew that might have happened and I was prepared for it. Um, but just, just a safety precaution for anybody that's using shavs or even a tongue, make sure it's, it's fresh and, and, uh, and hard and safe when you go out with your horses to work your horses because these things like this can end up in a catastrophe if you're not careful. So just always be careful and make sure you have good equipment. And don't do what I just did. I wish the video was running when it happened, but it really wasn't a big deal and uh, I just pulled the pin off the tether and left it in the field and was able to limp on back with the cart to the barn. So then I had to finish up, up with the tractor, but no problem, I got her done.